The Teacher by Joseph S. Benner You who have heard the call of the Christ and have consecrated yourself and your life to the service of humanity, you who have felt the divine urge to give to others of the spiritual blessings you have received, you who have assumed the position of teacher and leader to the hungering souls that have come to you to be fed. Hear this, my special message to you. You, beloved, are my chosen minister. You I have selected to be an avenue through which I shall pour many blessings into the world. Yes, I have called you apart and have pointed out to you the vast work there is to do, the millions of sleeping souls waiting for the touch that will rouse them to a consciousness of the real purpose of their being here in this life. I have shown you wherein you can help in this work and have proven to you that you are truly helping by the appreciation and gratitude of those whom I have brought to you and enabled you to help. Yes, you feel you are not working in vain, and although the way may appear dark and uncertain, and the means and ability to continue may not be in evidence, yet something within compels you to keep on, telling you that all will be taken care of in due season, if you prove faithful to the cause you have made your own. I recall all this to you, even though it may not have appeared thus clearly before to your mortal consciousness. I point this out in order to prepare you for what I now have to say. For I now desire you to know that I have a definite plan and purpose in all this, and that the time is here when you may become a conscious co-worker with me in its fulfilment. The point in your spiritual life has been reached when your true place in my plan and an understanding of my purpose will be revealed to you. If these words meet with a real response in your heart and you strive earnestly henceforth to obey the instructions I herein shall give. Who am I? I, who speak with so much authority and make such all-inclusive claims. Who am I that I can instruct you and can promise rewards which only God can give? Listen, I am you, your own true self. I am your true self, the spirit of the Christ, whose call you heard. I am your higher self, the quickener, whose urge you felt. I am your divine self, the giver of all the blessings you received. I am God within you. No, not a separate spirit dwelling somewhere within your body. I am you, your very self. Yes, I, God, am you, your real self, all of you, body, mind, soul, consciousness, will. I, God, your real self, speak here in these words of living truth, and the way you may know it is I who speak. If these words find any response within you, then it is because I, your real self, thus respond 
and compel your attention, that you may seek to understand all of my meanings hidden herein. But if there is no response within, and your human intellect tells you this is but another attempt to enlist your interest in some other teacher's ideas, and that you have a philosophy of your own and need no instructions from others, it is well. But no, it is not you who thus choose, but I, your all-wise and all-loving self, who choose for you. For I have other ideas for you, and will bring you to an understanding of my purpose and of your part in my plan, all in due season, when I have fully prepared your human mind and your soul consciousness so you can receive it. However, if you hear a voice within, faint, scarcely intelligible, telling you to read on, and perhaps there may be something of value herein, even though you think you already know your part in my plan and are now fulfilling my purpose, do not refuse, for it is my voice trying to be heard above the tumult of your human consciousness, gently urging you to keep your mind open, to listen carefully for words of truth, which I here promise you will appear abundantly, beyond measure, if you truly seek to know the word of God. But in order to get the full meaning of what follows, try to imagine that the I speaking herein is your real self, your higher self. And even if you do not believe it as yet, assume for the time being that it is your higher self and thus endeavour to attain the consciousness of it being you, talking to your mortal mind as if to a separate personality. If you will persist in holding this consciousness while you read, much, very much, will be added unto you in the way of spiritual blessings, and you will sing glad praises to God that this message came into your life. You, my beloved child, who are seeking me, but who have not yet found me, accepting as an intangible something, which has uplifted and inspired and led you on and on, ever into narrower and yet brighter paths, compelling you to reach out a helping hand to every needy one you meet. You who are conscious of me as the Christ love within your heart, and who seek to spread the message of his love abroad, sowing it in every heart that appears ready to receive it. You to whom I have come in radiant flashes of light, or in visions, either sleeping or waking, as truth, illumining your mind so that for the time being you see clearly the reality of my spiritual life and the illusoriness of all things that appeal to the outer senses and you are now seeking to teach others this truth. You who have become conscious of me as the indwelling life within you and it manifests to you as power and enables you not only to show forth my life in your body as vibrant health, but it permits you to transmit this life to others, vitalizing, strengthening and healing them, and thus bringing them to the consciousness of my life within their bodies. You, whom I have led a little further, whom I have taught the use of some of the laws of my being, having quickened in you certain inner faculties and powers, which seemingly set you apart from your fellows, 
so that you now call yourself an occultist and are seeking to attain the complete mastery of these powers of self. Yes, and even you, my blessed one, who are conscious of me as your divine self, as God within you, and who are drawing from me freely my love, my wisdom and my power, and who are teaching this great truth and attracting to you many followers who hail you as an illumined one. To you, one and all, I bring this, my message of the impersonal life. The idea of impersonal may not be new to you. You may have pondered over it. You may have striven more or less to live it. You may even have taught it to your followers, and yet you may have no comprehension of its real meaning. It is my purpose now to make you conscious of that meaning, so that you, as teacher and leader to others, no more can have the excuse of not knowing it. When I hereafter, from within, insist that my impersonal life shall manifest in and through you, for I, your true self, henceforth will be satisfied with nothing less. So follow carefully all I now shall say, and seek earnestly to know my real meaning, its personal and vital application to you, before passing it by or discarding it, should that impulse come to you. I am first going to ask some questions. In asking these questions, I am directing them straight to your soul consciousness. Necessarily, they will have to go through your mortal mind, as your mortal mind is but a part of your mortal self or your human personality it first becomes necessary that you learn the ways of the mortal mind and see this self as it really is, not as you fancy it is. See this personality of yours pretend to feel hurt, commence to rebel and to deny, and even to grow indignant, if not angry, at these questions. For I am going to probe to the quick, right to the centre of its self-complacency, its self-righteousness, its spiritual pride, its love of power, of leadership, of being thought very wise and good, if any of these qualities still exist in your personality. But remember, it is not you who are feeling hurt, or who rebel, or grow angry. It is only your personality, for you are really I, your own true self, and I am asking these questions, and I am showing up to you these qualities, insisting that all that stands in the way of my perfect impersonal life expression henceforth can have no place in your life. If you watch carefully and study the thoughts and feelings that come to your mind as you read the questions, you will, perhaps, discover a phase of your nature you thought was no longer in evidence. But the special mission of this message is to make you fully aware of such phase, and of all phases of your human nature that have not yet come under my your true self's dominion. This is inner teaching, and it is an inner work which you will now be called upon to do with me, your own higher self, as teacher. If your soul responds 
and you fearlessly are willing to accept anything I have to say, and will accept it in the true humility and understanding of spirit, know that great spiritual joy awaits you and many blessings will follow. But if your personality still insists that the I speaking herein is merely some person who considers him or herself divinely ordained and who is taking an unwarranted liberty in thus obtruding into your private affairs and that you need not answer the questions even to yourself for they are no one's business but your own. If your personality with its merely human mind so persuades you it is well and I needs must teach you in some other and much harder way. Yet it is all true. These questions are no one else's business. They are only your business. But remember, I, your own true self, God within you, alone am asking them and I am asking them only that you may face yourself, that you may see clearly this personality of yours, with all its human weaknesses, faults, and misconceptions that still exist, and which, through your inability to perceive their subtle influence over you, are hindering the perfect expression of my impersonal life in and through you. And if I shall prick the bubbles of all such illusions of the personality still lurking around in your mental atmosphere, after first showing up clearly their unreality, it is only in order that, should they again appear, you will immediately recognize them and refuse them entrance into your life. Perhaps your personality is saying, as you read, that none of this applies to you, that you need no such instructions. Think you so? Then answer to me, your true self, the following questions, carefully studying your feelings, after reading each with soul-searching analysis. Are you sure, my child, there is nothing of self seeking for self in this work you claim to be doing for humanity? Are you sure you, personally, are not taking the credit for the help your students and followers are getting through you? Are you quite sure you are not feeling a secret pleasure and pride in their attitude of admiring respect and awe towards you? These teachings you are giving out, are you certain they are direct from me, your divine self, or are they but your personal views, the thoughts you have gathered from other human teachers. Are you tainting this work I have given you to do by subtly introducing your personality into it, drawing attention more to you as teacher than turning them to me within themselves, their only true teacher? Can you truly say you have only loving and helpful thoughts and speak only the Christ's words when asked or when talking about other teachers and leaders, no matter who they be? When meeting with other teachers and leaders, do you never push yourself forward? never desire to lead or impress them with your personality or your powers?
When you meet one who has come into a higher realization of God than you, does only the purest brotherly love go out from you to that soul? When one of your own pupils, through your aid, awakens to the presence of me within, and quickly attains to an even greater consciousness of my powers than have you. Do you sincerely rejoice with great rejoicing and praise God for his blessings to that one? Are you sure, beloved, you are doing all that you do without thought of reward? caring naught for results, resting only in the consciousness that I am doing it all and that I am responsible? Do you truly realize that you and your personality are one, that there is no difference? And do you fully understand your own self and know your identity with God, your divine self. In all your teachings of these high truths, do you, in your soul, recognize the oneness of all, that I, God, am all there is, and all there is you are, that I am your real self, that there is no separation, that all that you do God does, that you are one with God and all God's powers are your powers? Are you sure, my child, that all the things you are teaching you, yourself, are? That you are doing, manifesting, living all that you preach to others? If you can truly answer satisfactorily to me, your higher self, all these questions, then this message is not for you. And you need read no further, for you know already all that I am going to say. But if you are not sure, and realize that your personality is still a more or less dominating factor in your life, then it would be wise to read on. For I am now coming to the vital part of my message. Ah, my beloved, how shall I tell you? How can I penetrate through the wall of unconscious self-righteousness, of self-sufficiency, of spiritual pride and independence? which your personality has built up around you, perhaps, and which often prevents my words of truth spoken through others reaching your soul consciousness. How can I get past the feeling which even now, maybe, is flooding your human consciousness, rousing your ire and opposition so that you may not grasp the deep significance of my meaning. Can you not see, if such feeling is manifesting in your heart, that your personality is still much in evidence, when it can so control you? Can you not understand that, not until the words such as the above, coming from any source whatsoever, can create in you nothing but a sympathetic comprehension of their loving and helpful intent, and that 
should any feelings of a rebellious or antagonistic nature arise, not until you can immediately recognize them and their source, and can proceed to transmute them into love and gratitude for me, for thus pointing out to you these weaknesses that still exist, can you be a pure and true channel through which the Christ teachings can flow? Can you not see that when one sets one's self up as a teacher to others and assumes to act as a mediator between them and God and to interpret for them his will and his meaning, that one takes upon one's self a great responsibility unless one is resting wholly in the consciousness of God and his love so that God is able to speak and act through one's human mind and body without let or hindrance of any kind. And it is to enable the sincere and true seeker after God, him who would earnestly strive to abide in him and to let his consciousness abide in his heart, if he but knew how, him who yearns only to know his will, that he may obey it and serve him in every possible way. It is to enable such to know I, the true self within, am God, beyond peradventure of a doubt that these words are written. There are many professing to know me, to be followers of me, to be giving out my teachings, and who are teaching and preaching the way of at one but who outwardly to others, and in their innermost thoughts, are so mixed up with their personalities, are so influenced and controlled by them, that they do not know me, even though they proclaim daily that I am leading them and speaking through them. It is for such also that these words are intended. It is true I do speak through such, but not as they understand, for they personally even though priding themselves over the beautiful thoughts that flow from their mouths at times, and the help these thoughts are to others, know not when I speak and when their personality. For if they did truly know me, they would have no pride, would take no credit to or thought of themselves but would humbly abide in the consciousness of me doing it all, and would let me and my impersonal love rule in every detail of their lives. Yet I speak through such proud personalities, and even through hypocrites and teachers of false doctrines, using every avenue to bring to the seeking soul the phases of truth needed to lead it into conscious oneness with me. For remember, truth is not always sugar-coated, and oft times it is needful that one taste of the bitter in order to appreciate the sweet and the pure. Know you not, it is through your sins your mistakes, through deception, false friends, wrong teaching, that you learn and grow strong? Thus, principally, do I teach. I lead you through all these, that you may learn to distinguish the true from the false, the realities of life from the fallacies and illusions the suffering and pain such learning entails, is only the fire of my love in your heart 
burning away the lusts of the flesh, the error thoughts, the selfishness, pride and egotism implanted and fostered therein by the personality which must be removed that my impersonal life can freely and fully manifest. And this personality, what is it? It is that which you, with your human mind, imagine yourself to be. It is the creature to which you gave birth many, many ages ago, which you have nurtured and fed, loved and fought for, trusted and followed and believed in, just as if it were real, all these years. The child of your bosom, the creature of your human mind, thought-born, when you fell away in consciousness from me in Eden after your first sin, and ever since have fed with and bred on the idea that you were separate from me, and that I, God, was displeased with you, and have been continually punishing you for eating the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. And if I have permitted you to love and trust, follow and obey this imaginary child, now grown in your consciousness to full maturity, and become so strong and powerful that it dominates and rules its parent with a rod of iron. It is only in order that, through the sins and errors into which it drove you, and the consequent suffering these brought, I might awaken you to the reality of its unreality, to the fact that it has no existence except in your mind, that the only life it has and all its power come from your constant thinking that you are this personality and are separate and apart from me. And if there has awakened in you a dim sense of its unreality, and you are now turning within to me, seeking to be released from the thraldom of its rule, know that it can never be until you are fully conscious that you and I, God within you, are one, that there is no separation, that all I am you are, that all I have is yours, that all power is given you in heaven and earth, and hence that I am and you must be master, and that this personality of yours is merely a phase of mortal thought I permitted to be born in your human consciousness in order to develop your mind and body until they become strong enough consciously to contain and fully express my impersonal life. You must be master, absolute master of yourself, but you cannot be master until you know yourself, know every phase of your personality, all your strength and all your weakness, all your powers, physical, mental and spiritual, all your human faults, tendencies and limitation, and can see yourself and know your personality even as others see and know you. With both the eyes and judgment of the world and the vision and understanding of the spirit, know all about that personality which has so subtly and craftily impinged itself upon your consciousness, that now you can scarcely tell when it is manifesting, and when I, your true self. So this personality of yours must be subdued, 
must be merged into my impersonality before my true teachings can come forth. You must realize with soul realization that you, the impersonal you, the true you, are one with your brother, even as you are one with me. You must learn to see me, his impersonal self, underneath the illusions of his personality. You must permit no reflection of your own personality to cloud the clear sight of me therein, yearningly waiting for the time when he, too, perhaps through you, may be led to recognize me abiding within his heart. In the impersonal, all is one. When you can enter into the oneness of the impersonal consciousness and can abide there at will, you have entered into my kingdom and have found God and thereafter will be able to see and know him in all his creations. For the impersonal consciousness is my consciousness. It is my kingdom, the realm of my being. And as I am the life of all things, once having entered this realm, you become one with me, and therefore one with all beings. And you can go in and out and find pasture. For I will feed you with the bread of the Spirit, and the wine of life will flow through you in rivers of living love, blessing you in all ways, and likewise all whom you contact. So I tell you these things, my child, my chosen one that you may strive unceasingly to know this personality, know all its subtly selfish phases, many of them hidden so deep within your consciousness that you are not even aware they are there, because you hid them there long ages ago, having been deceived into believing them good and necessary to your life, and therefore made them part of your nature. But now, with my help, you are going to hunt them all out and cast them forth, that my impersonal nature can freely manifest. As I have chosen you, my child, and have called you aside, and have permitted you to think you have a special work to do, I want you to be absolutely sure, beloved, it is my voice you have been listening to while doing this work, and not the voice of your personality. If I am to be your teacher, and you wish me to lead and direct you in this work, and you truly desire to serve me, then must every attribute of your human personality yield itself to me, and you must compel it so to do. So long as one selfish desire or instinct remains, it is sure to taint your work, and you still will be under the domination of the personality. There are many, many ways it will seek to manifest, but I am here, and I will point out each clearly if you ask me, I will tell you, not with dominating, insistent authority, nor with anxious clamorings within, but with gentle, loving suggestion that you cannot fail to understand, if you will but be on the alert and will listen for my voice, which is ever counseling and directing those who wait upon me in living faith and trust. My work, you will gradually learn, can only be done 
with the spirit of impersonal love in your heart. Only through such spirit, selfless, disinterested, never caring about results, can I express through you. You must yield all to me, must let me rule, and must leave all consequences to me. When you have learned to do that, then will I cause to quicken in you a consciousness of your identity with me, of my power and my wisdom and my love within. Then will your personal life gradually merge into my impersonal life, and you will be conscious of all your divine heritage and of the real work I have chosen for you to do. But until your human consciousness has become merged with my divine consciousness, until you can truly know and use your divine powers, it might be better to so live that you assume to possess not powers or wisdom above your fellows. It might be better first to prove to yourself that you are able to live and to be all these things you now more or less clearly see with the inner eye before you give them out to others as truth or as coming from God. For you know it is only the personality that sets itself up as one of authority or as being wise in the spirit, as one chosen of God, and as being his mouthpiece. And remember, I am in your students and followers, even as I am in you. Often, very often, the beautiful thoughts that come from teachers do not carry the conviction of truth because I cause their hearers to see only too plainly that such teachers are not living what they teach, or that their personalities are too dominating, or they are too desirous of giving the impression of possessing wisdom, or spirituality, or powers, or that they are unmistakably leading followers on only in order to get from them what money they can, deceiving themselves the while into believing such fallacious reasoning as the servant is worthy of his hire, or that in giving out spiritual teachings one must receive back material pay, that being the law. Ah, my beloved, are you sure none of these things are noticed by your pupils or hearers in you? Are you sure that the money question is not occupying the most prominent place in your mind? And the desire to serve me is receiving but secondary consideration? Can you truly say that you put all material problems wholly up to me, knowing that I will always provide bounteously, that there is no fear in your heart, no doubts or questionings as to my always supplying every need, yeah, every desire. If so, then is it necessary to charge or accept pay for the loving help I give out through you? Is not my servant worthy of his hire, and will I not provide? Consider the lilies of the field and the fowl of the air. Who clothes and feeds them? Are you not more to me than they? Ah, oh, you of little faith. Listen, only as you give out the fullness of love, freely unthinking as to reward or returns, can you receive of my bounty? 
but you may not accept this now. If so, it is well, for I have chosen that it be so, and that you learn the truth through other channels. You must still hold to the belief that even God's servants must live, and that in living and working on the world plane, they are compelled to use the world's methods, even in spiritual work. And this is true, but not as you understand it. The time will come, however, when you have learned through trial and suffering to know my way, when you are able to see with my impersonal eyes and to know with my impersonal understanding and can put aside altogether all personal interest in your teaching and in both the results of and the reward for such teaching, that you will know how to use the world's tools even in spiritual work. But before that can be, I may have to lead you by the hard way up the high mountain of spiritual attainment, by the hard way of bitter experience. Yes, you can get there that way, but ah, oh, how long and heartbreaking the journey. Perhaps, you say, that is the only way one can learn. No, it is only one way you can learn, the hard way. It is the personal way, and it may be necessary for some to go that way but I seek to save you from that way. Have you not seen the sad misfortune of some of those I have thus led up into the high mountain, those who have climbed up the hard way, and have fallen, even from near the summit? Yes, no one can rise so high but what he can fall, for the personality is always in evidence on that journey, it is the adversary who is opposing every step. This is what makes it so hard. So long as there is left anything of self, just so long will the personality find a way to oppose. I may lead you to the mountain top and show you all the kingdoms of the air, of the earth, of fire and of water and present them to you, and tell you that they are all yours to use. But if you have not thoroughly purged your heart, mind, and soul of self, behold, the personality appears, and speaks from behind you, and so subtly imitates my voice, that you may think it is I, and when it tells you to take and use these kingdoms to glorify self, that having climbed to this great height, such is your reward, you may trust it and obey. Yes, even as they who fell from their former high estate into deep outer darkness. In order that you may be saved that journey and that temptation, my beloved, I here hold out to you the far easier and simpler way. If you will but abide in the consciousness of me, the true self within you, and let my holy impersonal love abide in you, and will permit it to flow freely, unhindered, unconditioned from your heart to bless all whom you meet. If you will but do this, you may ask of me whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. For do you not see, beloved, if you can fully harmonize your life with my life by eliminating all phases of the selfish personality, if you will but get out of the way with your personal ideas, beliefs and opinions, so that my life 
which is but my living love, can freely and fully express forth through you, that the void left after the personal life is gone will be immediately filled, even as air rushes into a vacuum, with my impersonal life. For my impersonal life is the real substance of all things, and is ever seeking to express outwardly its true nature, and all of it that is necessary to fill out and complete my divine nature in you, will surely flow both into you and through you, whenever you let it, and will harmonize and bless you, and bring into outer tangible manifestation all good things needed to completely round out your human nature, and make for joy, happiness, satisfaction, and peace within your soul. And shall I now tell you about my impersonal life, how you may consciously live it with me, and be wholly one with me, your true self, your Father in heaven? Then listen, and meditate long and earnestly on all I now shall say. Do not pass by a single sentence, or any one thought in it, until my meaning becomes clear. I seek nothing but to be and express myself in and through you. Myself is purely impersonal, for it is the real self of every human being. I am the pure, perfect, selfless, inner nature of every human self, ensouled in their physical bodies, in order to develop them into mediums for the expression of my divine attributes on earth, even as it is in heaven. Therefore, you, too, must seek nothing but to be and express your true self, which is I, your divine, impersonal self. Thereby do you unite your purpose with mine, your will with my will, your nature with my nature, and thus become one with me, and we become two in one, the divine estate on earth. In order that this may be, we must purge first your heart, then your mind, and then your body, of every sense and inclination of the personal self. That can only be accomplished by my holy, impersonal love, with which I will fill your heart, so that there will be no room in it for any part of self. With the heart purified and sweetened, the mind will attract and think only pure and sweet thoughts, my thoughts, which are always pure wisdom. Therefore you will see only purity and goodness in all things. Naturally, then, being no more controlled or influenced by wrong thoughts, your body will become subservient to my life, whose vitalizing, purifying, and perfecting power will drive from it all in harmonies. Then, with only my love in your heart, my thoughts in your mind, and my life in your body, you will know I am your own true self for then there will be no other self. Then I am, your true self, will go forth in the world, but not be of it. You will no longer be attracted to or by it. 
But you will see with my eyes, hear with my ears, and know with my understanding all things. You no longer will see only the outward appearance of things, but you will see them in their reality. Nothing past, present or future will be hidden from you, for the limitations of the human nature are no longer there, and in the spirit there is no time, space, personalities or separation. All is one. And you will go forth with the consciousness of this great impersonal love within you, as the very substance of your nature, and through it I will uplift, strengthen, help and bless all whom I will lead you to or attract to you. Love being your nature, and on the earth plane in man, it being the pure and perfect expression of my life. It is always pushing forth in and through him towards full, complete, harmonious outer manifestation. And with the consciousness of your divinity and of the divine power my love gives you, instead of parading such or giving evidence of such in any personal way, you will only give and help and bless impersonally, seeking to remove all fetters, all hindrances, all limitations that prevent my life in any way from expressing in and through your fellow beings. Thus you become one with the one life, with my inner impersonal life, therefore one with me the fount and source of all blessings, earthly and divine. And therefore you will no longer seek to teach or lead others, because you have become impersonal, and being impersonal you will let me, within both them and you, do all the teaching and directing. You will no longer seek to lead, but only to follow me. And you will no longer even seek to be wise, or good, or strong, or rich, or healthy, or happy, because you are all these things, being one with me, who am the inner essence of which these things are but the outer manifestation. And you will know that all in harmony presages the coming harmony, that all lack is but my urge towards complete expression, that all darkness is but shadow indicating the direction of the light, that all weakness is part of the effects of training which will result in a perfected will, and that all evil is good and necessary to one who has attained to my impersonal consciousness and viewpoint. And so you will go about your business, whatever it be, for then you will know that all business is my business, and instead of seeking and striving to gain for self the spiritual blessings that lie at the mountain top, you will cease all seeking and striving, and you will have forgotten self, and will feel the great love within, letting it quicken and awaken and help and strengthen the struggling souls about you, seeking to comprehend and obey the feeling of me within their hearts, but who, owing to their immature and untrained minds are misunderstanding that feeling and consequently my meaning as I try to make it known from within.
and I will lead them to you, or you to them, that I may teach them first from without, through you. Just as I have brought to you my message through these words, so will I give my message to many hundreds of others through words I shall speak through you. But this cannot be as I purpose it, until I can live my impersonal life in you, until you have yielded up your human personality to my divine impersonality. Not until you determine with all the power of your will and yearn with all the hunger of your soul to live the impersonal life, to make your personal self wait upon and serve me, your own true impersonal self, can I give you even a glimpse of my real meaning. But when I have vouchsafed you that glimpse, my beloved, ever afterward will the glory of it be with you, and it will lead you on and on and ever on, until my full meaning is forced from me by the might of your soul's desire. That is my message. Its mission is to awaken in you this desire, the desire to live the impersonal life. This is high teaching, and is only for those who can see it, for those whom I have prepared and made ready for its reception. To such, however, it is but the door which opens to far higher teachings that I will give to them direct from out their own souls. Those who come to me in loving faith and trust and who are willing to empty their hearts of self, that I may fill them with my holy, impersonal love. For I here promise you, I have in store for those who yearn to come to me by the simple, loving, impersonal way, great wonders of spiritual blessings, which will be to them a source of endless joy, and that I will give to them, as I abide in them, and they in me, the unlimited use of all my divine powers and attributes.